On the previous video, I completed page six up to step step four of bag two. Now we're going to continue on with bag two, starting with step five. Uh, for this, uh, I'm going to need the servo. Again, don't forget to run power before you install the horn, just to make sure that it's in neutral. And uh, we're going to need to complete this assembly. So this assembly is going to require these two aluminum bits right here. Uh, now, one of the things to note is the cutout. So I'm gonna go ahead and orient them this way, just in the photo, so you can see. And there's this plastic piece. Uh, if you notice, this is the flat side. So the flat side will go this way. So therefore, this is going to go in here. And you really cannot make a mistake because this little tab is going to key in here. Uh, so it's very difficult for you to orient it the other way. Uh, I'm actually not sure how that you would do that. Uh, but let's see, we need six millimeter screws. I uh, actually picked up the wrong ones. Uh, these are the six millimeter screws. They're the smallest, they're on the very top. And there's gonna be one on this side, one on the other side. And you need a two millimeter driver for this. Most of the screws will be a two millimeter driver. Now, quick little note, this is going into aluminum, therefore I will be needing some thread locking compound. Dab's all you need. And snug is all you need. Do not over tighten this. You can damage the plastic. Go ahead and grab the other one. A little dab. And we'll do the same thing. This will key in. Now, uh, they do make a carbon fiber brace uh, that you can replace this with if you wanted to. Uh, all right, great. So this is going to go toward the servo right in here and the horn of the servo is going to go this way. Uh, let me just run the wire. Let, here, let me see. This is not going to work, no, is it? Maybe, maybe not. We will see. So I'm gonna run the wire right through one of these holes. And I'm hoping this will work. All right, well, let's go ahead and remove one. I'll remove one of the sides. All right. Uh, so remove one of the sides, do not build the entire thing until you run the wire through here if you're using one of these low profile servos. Now I can go ahead and install this. That is it. Uh, now I'm going to need four washers. And the screws are going to be eight millimeters, so it's these four. And each one of these four, because it's going into that aluminum plate, will need a uh, thread lock. I should have placed the washer in first. That's all right, I can place it now. Just getting it close, I'm not driving it all the way. And let's go with the next screw. 
Now, a recommendation, I did not mention this in the other video, but uh, just open up your bags if you do not and separate all the screws by size, type and size. Uh, so you can see it's not the best fit in the world, but it'll work. At least it's not cutting the wire. I may actually end up going with a full-size servo on this one, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'll see. Maybe I'll go with a low profile. The only reason why I would go with the full-size would be for a little more weight, but we'll see how it drives. Do not over-tighten this because you can damage the servo case. Uh, well, this particular one happens to be plastic. Therefore, snug is all you need. Keep in mind that plastic acts as a spring. So it just creates tension as it's compressed. So that compression will create some pressure. Uh, great. So now we have the following. Uh, once we have this, we get to mount this on the chassis, so you will need that. And notice these two holes right here. That is where this will screw onto. So I'm going to get the wire out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and flip this. Now you will need some thread lock compound for this as well. Uh, let me go ahead and set this here and get those two screws ready. Uh, 10 millimeter these right here and if you're ever unsure of the size just just measure them right 10 millimeter all right now because of that wire these are skewed just a little I'm going to try to set one in out here, creating an opening. That's if I can manage. So I'm trying not to stick my head under the camera. And I can't really aim. Uh, let's see. All right. There it is. Wait, nope, missed it. All right, so the issue that I'm having is that whole, the servo wire. So that's the issue that I'm having currently. Uh, let me go ahead and do this. The issue is, would I be able to tighten these? I'll go ahead and loosen the servo and see if I can manage. Depending on your servo, you're probably not gonna run into this problem. This is probably just, just happening to me. <laughs> so. We will see. All right, that one is in, but I'm still gonna leave it quite, quite loose. And the reason why is I want to make sure I put the other one in first. There we go. And let's go back. Right, so now I'm going to drive these in and then I'll try to tighten the servo. Alright, so there's the left one, which is on the right side of your camera or your screen. And here goes, sorry, yes, left, and then this is the right. 
right, once I flip the chassis. Uh, there we go. Good. And, ah, yes, this works. Perfect. So now I can tighten. So just tighten the servo at the end. Give you a little bit of slack to play with. And there. That's it. Snug. Servo is installed. Therefore, now we can get the top part of the bulkhead. So let me just put this wire over here so it's not on the way. And this is just going to sit on top. So these are going to go right here, right on the edges. Uh, right in here, so you're just going to have uh, these screws. Uh, so if you ever want to replace the sway bar, you will have to remove this section here. Uh, which uh, I can't remember if you have to remove the tower because of it as well. Probably not. But you do have to remove that. Uh, and for this, we're going to install just the rear screws for now, which will be 14 millimeter. It should be these long ones. And it is these long ones. So these long ones will go here and there. And this one, I'm just going to go ahead and drive it all the way. Now you could use uh, some power tools, for example, electric screwdriver. Uh, I just do it all by hand, but here we go. All right, uh, we have uh, that step and that step complete. So now we can move on to this step right over here. So now we need the 10 millimeter screws, which are the last two button screws that we have left. And those will be these top ones which I will drive it as is and then fiddle with it. More than likely, I'm gonna to have to replace the sway bar. Now you don't have to buy again a brand new kit. You don't need the latest and the greatest. There are plenty of people that when a revision comes out, they end up buying a new kit. Uh, you can buy again a 6.1 or 6.2. And then just, once you break the arms, just buy the gullwing arms and upgrade the buggy as you go. There it is. All right. And now don't forget the orientation for this. Uh, sway bar. All right. We will install these. Now the sway bar will go right up to the edge. Just a little bit of thread lock compound. And generally what I do is I just keep my finger there and then I'll tell you what I'm doing shortly. Here we go. Oh. So I'm pushing the ball in and then with this driver as I'm turning, I'm actually pushing it out just so I can try to get it flush. Uh, there's multiple ways you could do it. You could set it, for example, on top of the ruler while you're doing it. Uh, but the important thing is that it is flush. Uh, let's see. There we go. Perfect. There 
it is. Now I can move on to the arms. Uh, do not cut these out. That's where the sway bar goes, so leave those on. Uh, I see those two little balls on there. That's for the sway bars. Uh, so you definitely want those on. Uh, now the sway bars, the shocks are going to go toward the rear, so these holes are going to point back uh, into uh, the model. Uh, so you're going to have this in here, just like that, uh, but we have to install the brace. Now something else, make sure that you ream these uh, before installing with a 3mm reamer. I believe it's 3mm, I could be wrong. Uh, is it good? 3mm. Uh, I need the brace. All right, the brace, these little horns, those are going to go up. Uh, they sort of go here into the chassis. And then I can go ahead and drop this in. If I can get it into the hole of the metal brace. There we go. There's one. And now I can place the other. And I can go ahead and grab the pin and drop the pin. Now I believe I was a little off camera. Uh, but let's see, there we go. All right. Uh, those droop nicely. Uh, now, in the back of the arms, I should have done this before installing the arms, to be honest. Uh, these tiny little screws that are here, these are the stops for the pins so that the pins don't, do not back out. Now these, once you hit the arm, that's where you stop. Don't even try to snag them up, just get them close, that's all you need. Uh, because if you damage the arm right where the screws go, that is it. Uh, you're going to have to replace the arm. You could use some CA glue to try to fix the problem, and sometimes it works, uh, but just don't over tighten these. These do not really need to be snug or tightened beyond just barely touching the surface of the arm. Now I have no idea why I'm struggling to put this on my driver. Oh, this is a smaller size. No, it's a one point. No, it is a smaller size. You've got to be kidding me. Why would you do this to me? All right, this is a smaller size, so I'm gonna have to do this in a bit uh, with a different driver. Uh, usually they're 1.5s. I'm actually very, very surprised. They used something other than the 1.5, unless they're not cut properly. But I believe they're just a different size. Uh, so I'm gonna skip this, hopefully the pins don't fall out, but make sure that you put them on that little tiny hole uh, right next to the pins, where the pins are. Uh, and those are the little guys right in there. Uh, all right. Now I need the links. So there are these plastic links right here. This is what's going to tie the arm to the sway bar. And if you're wondering where they are, they are in a completely different bag. That's the reason why. Let me look at bag three and I will tell you what bag in a bit. It is not bag three. This is one of the things that I find annoying about associated. See, I'm looking at the rear bag, not here. It's gonna be in the bag where your differential is and your shocks. Uh, so it's these two little plastic links up here. Uh, go ahead and open these up. So if we find the bag where the springs are, it's these two little plastic uh, links on the top. And this bag, uh, I believe this is bag six. All right, uh, so these will go in there. You will need uh, some pliers to install them. Pliers is, Pliers will make this so much easier, and luckily for me, I forgot them. Uh, 
I think they're still in my bag. But it's all right. I'm just gonna stick this driver in there and clip them on, so no big deal. And then I'm just gonna clip the top part of the sway bar, which again, pliers would have made this much easier. And let's see, I'll go ahead and clip this. Nope, all right, let's do the bottom. Clip the sway bar. And there it is. Smooth. Uh, that is it. So all of this is complete except for those two little tiny screws, which I'm going to need another driver. So I'm actually going to have to use my Allen wrenches for those, uh, which I am a little annoyed, I'll be honest. Uh, but it's all right. It's all right. Uh, now at this point, uh, one of the things that I need to do is the following. So here at the bottom, uh, because I did replace the lower bulkhead, I do need to set those, uh, set screws on the plastic one. There's only one on the steel. There are four. So I'm going to have four of those. And if you got the steel one, you're going to get these uh, silver looking ones, which are aluminum. If you can replace them for steel ones, go for it. Just not going to look for them right now. Uh, these do wear out over time if you assemble and disassemble. Uh, that's the reason why I recommend the steel. So this is actually gonna help this from sliding. So even though I don't have those installed yet, I won't have to worry about those pins falling off right now. And there it goes. All right. Snug is all you need. That doesn't feel right. There we go. Second throw, I thought it was cross threading. And that is it. Now we have one more. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so that would be that. And now we can install the front bumper. So the front bumper is actually what's gonna keep these from sliding forward. Uh, and this is just going to go in here, just like that. And then we just need 16 millimeter. It should be these long ones. It is these long ones. And it's just your two millimeter driver and then you just drive them in. So I'm gonna go ahead and drive this in. Now, uh, step nine, uh, that's the shock tower. So for the shock tower, uh, it's, it's interesting because if you use the shock tower cover, it will not work if you use the upper holes because there's only two holes on it. That's the reason why. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. All right, so here's the shock tower. It's a beautiful piece of uh, carbon fiber. So notice gold wing. Uh, this will go in here, 
right in here, and I'm wondering why on earth you would have me install the ball studs first. They almost seem like they're in the way, and this is another thing that will be annoying if this is the case. Now, something that I missed, I'm sure I missed it, I'm supposed to install this in here. Uh, so this, before putting this plate, would have been a lot easier had I installed this, uh, but I did not. So, uh, I may do it now real quick, and by May, I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. It should just clip on. Uh, let me just make sure I'm doing the correct side. All right, here we go. So that looks like the correct side. to need pliers for this. I'll do that one later. Uh, just grab some needle nose and then just clip on and clip on. Uh, that's all you need. Uh, so moving on to the shock tower. So the shock tower, we have it right here. I'll go ahead and put these on this other side. Then we'll not be using them. And for this, we'll need 10 millimeters. So these are the 10 millimeter right here. And we are going to use these for the bottom. So the bottom, we just use the 10 millimeter. If you do install the front wing, so there's a front lower wing, of course this thing is in the way. Uh, all right. So this is something that I find, and this is why I get annoyed with associated kits. Uh, this ball stud is in the way. So now I have to remove the ball stud so I can put the tower on. Maybe if I just move it up a little, I'll have access to it. No, it's gonna have to come off. Both of them will have to come off. Yes, this is where an electric screwdriver would come handy, just to remove these things. All right. There we go. And now I can place this. And let's go ahead and grab that countersunk 10 millimeter. started. Go ahead and do the other one. All right, snug is all you need on this. Perfect. All right, now that I have this, uh, there's a few little things to note. Actually, you can use all of the settings. I just realized this, uh, okay, this is just a cover, fabulous. Perfect, whew. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set my, I'm actually gonna go with the bottom ones for now. Uh, maybe I should go to the middle. So stock setting, based on what I'm seeing, they go to three. Uh, I wanna go to two on here. 
So let me go ahead and grab these. These are the 20 millimeter, 20 millimeter, very long ones. Uh, let's see. So I'll go right in the middle, right in here. And once you do that, uh, you will need these. Uh, so these actually thread on, but I'm gonna put a little bit of thread lock Compound, right, oh, it's too much. Right in here. So both of these will just thread on. And these actually use a seven millimeter driver. So if you just have a seven millimeter driver, a seven millimeter, well, nut driver, seven millimeter nut driver, or a seven millimeter wrench, uh, you can go ahead and use that on this. And you can just, ah, oh, there we go, barely fits. Once you have your electronics, you're gonna be out of luck though. All right, so that is all you need. And, Snug is all you need. There we go. Uh, so we have those two bits. Uh, now this plastic bit, that's to hold the cover. So this is what's gonna thread on. So this is just gonna be pushed through those holes. These two holes, if I can aim. There we go. It's going to look like this. And then this will be screwed on to the top. And that's it. And you're going to be using these gray screws, these small gray screws. It should be a 1.5, unless they went with some odd size. Uh, there we go, 1.5. And I don't know why I started threading the one that I'm not holding. And uh, the reason why I like this cover, I like this cover because then your your tower, it just slides. If you accidentally flip on carpet, it'll just slide, so it won't catch. Here we go. And that's that. So now this little section, this is for the front wing. This will go here. Just install it before you put these ball studs back in. And for this one, you're gonna use the 10 millimeter, which are these shorter ones. And you're going to use your two millimeter driver for that one. Go ahead and do this. And we'll grab the other one. And there we go. Uh, so we have this, we've completed that as well. Uh, and that is it. Uh, so now all I have to do is just put the ball studs back in, but I'll do that off camera. Uh, I do have these two spare screws. These I'm going to need later on once I build uh, this section right over here. So I'm not worried, I don't have extra parts. Uh, that's what's happening. Or maybe I do have extra parts and I just haven't realized it yet. Uh, but uh, this is what goes. So arms move freely. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please comment below if you have any questions, suggestions. Uh, also, uh, go ahead and subscribe if you have not. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. My, my, my rod!